President Trump head faked a veto today, but ultimately signed a huge budget bill to keep the government funded and to assure a huge increase in military spending. But he may have been reacting to conservative criticism and a lot of it of what's in and not in the massive omnibus bill. Afterward, he blasted Congress in general and Democrats in particular for coming up with a plan no one had time to read and full of money, he says, is being wasted. And he is promising he will never do it again. Chief White House Correspondent John Roberts starts us off tonight, as he often does, on the North Lawn. Good evening, John. Frank, good evening to you. The president's veto threat might have been an elaborate bluff, but it did have the intended effect. His event this afternoon to criticize the omnibus spending bill becoming must-see TV. On Wednesday, President Trump said he'd support it. This morning, he threatened to veto it. But ultimately, the president held his nose and signed a $1.3 trillion bill to keep the government running for the next six months. I say to Congress, I will never sign another bill like this again. I'm not going to do it again. Nobody read it. It's only hours old. The veto threat was issued in a morning tweet. President Trump upset that the 800,000-plus DACA recipients have been totally abandoned by the Democrats, not even mentioned in bill. And the border wall, which is desperately needed for our national defense, is not fully funded. The tweet prompted an urgent phone call from Secretary of Defense James Mattis, urging the president, for the sake of the military, to sign the bill. We looked at it a veto. I looked very seriously at the veto. I was thinking about doing the veto, but because of the incredible gains that we've been able to make for the military, that overrode any of our any of our thinking. Mattis showed clear relief that the Pentagon would be getting the additional sixty billion dollars that Congress signed off on. Today we receive the largest military budget in history, reversing many years of decline and unpredictable funding. And together, we are going to make our military stronger than ever. President Trump railed against the Senate rule that requires Democratic support and Democratic spending ideas to pass the bill. And he ripped the Democrats for not including anything for the so-called dreamers. I can tell you this, and I say this to DACA recipients, that the Republicans are with you. They want to get your situation taken care of. The Democrats fought us. They just fought every single inch of the way. But a month ago, Democrats did offer a fix, a bipartisan proposal to fully fund the wall, $25 billion in exchange for a path to citizenship for 1.8 million dreamers. But the White House rejected it. Democrats accused the president of creating unnecessary drama at the 11th hour with his veto threat. This is now what people are getting used to about Donald Trump, and I don't think it's wearing well uh, on the public. Uh, this constant say one thing one day, change your mind the next day, uh, and that's what we're seeing here. The initial plan was for the president to sign the bill after scorching it. This ridiculous situation that took place over the last week. But President Trump didn't want the enduring image of him putting pen to paper on something he didn't like. So aides removed a chair and signing document before he arrived. And more staff changes at the White House. After months of rumors, President Trump announced National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster is leaving to be replaced by former U.N. Ambassador John Bolton. Bolton is well known for his outspoken hardline positions, including support for the Iraq War, which the president opposed. I've never been shy about what my views are, but frankly, what I've said in private now uh, is behind me, at least effective April the 9th, and the important thing is, uh, uh, is what the president says and what advice I give him. And there appears to be another staffing change in the works. The White House is not pushing back at all on an imminent departure of VA Secretary Dr. David Shulkin. The only thing that appears to be in question now is the timing of when he will depart. Brett? several of those timing issues. John, uh